Hi, welcome to Themer Solos. I am Maggie, the themer half of our Thinker Themer channel. I'm all about story and theme, and Amy, my partner, is the thinker who's all about mechanics. Now, I'm not only am I the themer in our uh, household, but I'm also the solo player. Amy has her Kickstarter diaries and all the time that she spends uh, researching through uh, Kickstarters. And during all that time, Lonely Old Me will just sit down and play solo versions or variants of uh, board games. So I thought I'd trial um, a video series to look at some of the games that we've reviewed um, and talk about the solo variant or the solo mode of those games and how, well, on their own, what they're like, but also how they compare to the multiplayer version. Or what I like to call, is this game better with Amy or without Amy? So today we're going to be looking at Newsford. Now I say Newsford, I think the proper pronunciation would, would be something like Newsfjord. Um, I am hopeless at this and I apologize for that. But in a newsford, which is by Uwe Rosenberg, one of my favorite uh, designers, and it's by Lookout Games. In this game, you are playing competing um, fishing companies. So obviously in the solo variant, you are um, your own fishing company. And the aim of it is really to have the most net assets by the end of the game. And that's going to be a measure of both uh, gold, so the actual cash that you end up with, also shares that you have both in your company and other people's companies. But at the moment, because of the solo variant, it's only going to be the shares in your company. And also all the points that you're going to get from all the buildings that you manage to build and all those facilities along the way. And the fleet of boats that you build. So all the different ships that we're going to build that we, will allow us to go out and catch more fish. Um, again, they all have victory points attached to them and they will, again, give us give us that high score at the end. So what's the difference between the, the multiplayer and the solo game? What I like about this is that it actually has a couple of solo variants. It's got a basic version where you have a um, you're playing with two colors, but it's still only your one board. So you're really just aiming to get the most points possible. I love Feast for Odin and this a lot of different elements of this remind me a lot of Feast for Odin. One of those things is the, you know, the negative um, points on the board that you're trying to, to, to manage. Also, just obviously the, the worker placement and the resource management. And it just feels like, this just feels to me like a very short and sweet uh, version of that Euro hit that I get and that, oh, strategy deliciousness that I get when I play a good big game of Feast. The way it works is you're going to be controlling two different colors and these two colors, um, you're only going to be doing one at a time. You have a very handy solo round marker that indicates what colors turn it is. You would be placing all of those, um, uh, taking all of those actions, placing all of those workers. And then at the end of that colors turn, you would be moving the marker and now it's blue's turn. But now blue has to work around all of the actions that have been blocked by red. So this is very similar to Feast for Odin, where you are essentially every turn you're leaving a color behind and it's blocking or limiting the actions that you can take. So one thing that I thought we could do is I'll do a very quick round so you see how that plays. And then I'll talk about what the experience is like of playing the game. So at the start of each round, we would start with a fishing phase. We start with this small uh, little boat where we have a capacity of three fish that we can catch. So I catch my three fish and the order of distribution of the fish, which is the next stage, is first we go through elders. I haven't actually collected any elders. The elders are like your, essentially like your consultants that are going to help you catch more fish or build better buildings. Um, they're going to help you um, kind of supercharge your company. At the moment, I don't have any, so I don't have to distribute to, your, to my elders. They get paid in fish because obviously it's a fishing town, so it's, it's all about the fish. So I get to keep those. Then shares in my possession. So we start out with two shares, issued shares of our own company and three unissued shares. So these are minus points at the end. I have to make sure that those get issued. And if I buy them back, then I'll get a plus one point for each at the end. So first we go to issued share. So I'll be putting one fish on each issued share. Then um, we go to the reserve. So any um, remaining fish are gonna go into my reserve, which lives here. I can't access these fish unless I transfer them to my personal supply. 
Um, and then any excess, because this has a max of eight um, capacity, any excess fish, if I was catching a lot more fish, um, any excess I would have to put back into the general supply. So now we're ready to play this game. These ones that went into my own shares in my possession become part of my personal supply. These fish I can access, so that's pretty good. And I start at the moment with red's turn. So I'm controlling the red um, workers for this turn. With the, the starting uh, board, we start with four forests. So that's one, two, and that's, that's a double there. So I usually like to do the thin out action. That gives me one wood per forest. So I'll be getting four wood for that. That goes into my personal supply. And now I have a good mix of wood and fish. And you'll notice that I'm going to need wood and fish both for building some of these ships and also for building some of these buildings. But first, what I might do is I might go and take an elder because I find that they can be quite handy to have. So obviously they all have different uh, abilities. Uh, and I'm going to start with, um, let's do the build a ship or build a building. Again, gives me an additional um, building spot. When we get an elder, we have to give them a fish from the served fish uh, plates. And this is a bit of a side way of getting gold coins, where when we have excess fish in our supply, we can go and serve fish for every plate that we serve, and they become more increasingly expensive fish-wise. So that would be one fish, two fish, three fish. For every plate that we serve in that one turn, we get a gold coin. So at the moment, there's no fish left because I've used that for my, uh, my elder. And now I've got my final worker to place. And I think I'm going to, let's build a ship. So I'm going to build a ship. I'll build this one, which costs me two wood and two fish. So I'll put those back. He goes here. And now it means that my capacity to catch fish is going up to five. So that's the end of Red's turn. Um, we now go to Blue's turn, which means that I now control the blue um, workers. Now we again start with a fishing phase. So in our fishing phase, my capacity is now five. So I'll get one, two, three, four, five fishies. First, I go to my elder. So he gets a fish. At the point that he gets three fish, then there's a different distribution that happens where two fish go back into um, the supply and one comes into my personal supply. But at the moment, he's just sitting at two. I've got four left over, so they go to shares in my possession. So here, if I had issued shares, they would first go to shares that I have issued, but at the moment I haven't issued any shares, and then the remaining will start coming into my personal shares, and then go into my reserve. So I'm getting a lot of fishies in here. And then I'm going to move these ones into my personal supply. All right, so we start then the next turn. So as you can see, I haven't removed the red workers um, because they're going to be the ones blocking Blue's actions. So maybe now for this turn, I might look at um, building a building perhaps. And then this is where I would have a look at um, there's the A buildings that give you some more immediate type um, benefits. They tend to be better earlier in the game. And then the B uh, buildings that are usually more expensive, but they often have higher victory points uh, at the end. So let's um, let's try with the, let's try build a building there. So I'll code here, build a building. I'll build the agency, which doesn't actually have any points. But after I build a ship, um, I'm going to be able to turn one wood into one gold or one fish um, and or one fish into one gold. So that could be quite handy. So I'll put that one there and I have to pay two fish and two wood. Okay, um, for my next turn, what I might do is I might um, issue some shares. So I'll issue um, a share. This share goes here. Whenever I, in, I, I issue a share, I get two gold coins. Um, then I could buy that share back, which might not be a terrible idea. I could buy that share back um, with this one, which will only cost me one coin, but it means that it'll allow me to have um, a, an extra fish when the next fishing phase happens. And so now we move on to the third round, which is again Red's turn, which means that I can bring back my red workers um, to start another round and start with the fishing phase. So now in this fishing phase, if I were to begin, I'm going to be, I will, I'm still at a capacity of five. 
I'm going to be able to distribute to my elder. That'll trigger that second distribution there. And then I'm going to be able to distribute to three shares. So I'm getting to keep more, more there. Uh, and then whatever remains will go in here. And this is getting now quite crowded. So it's going to be a good idea to look at transferring that reserve. So that's just a very quick overview of a sample round of play of how a solo mode variation works. This game also comes with another more advanced solo mode where you're actually going to be controlling three different colors. So red, blue and yellow. And what will happen in this one, obviously, there's going to be more things that you're going to be blocking. It allows you to change the copy action to the five player side. So you do have a bit more ability to copy or mimic an action that has been blocked. But the other thing about this is it has a campaign mode, which I love because there's this sense of you're going to be playing three games, three consecutive games, and you're going to be getting rid of buildings that you've already built. So in this game, you have the different decks of the different kind of fish um, types, and they're all different sets of buildings that have probably skewed different strategies um, as more or less favorable. So what you'd be doing is you'd be working your way through that deck of A, B and C cards. And with each game, any buildings that you've actually built are removed from the game. So second and third games means that you're going to be forced to use some of those other other buildings that you didn't build before. Then you're going to have a total point score at the end uh, for all your three games. And then the, the aim is to try and get 100. I've only been able to get 97 is my highest. So I'm not quite there yet. Um, but then any, any amount that you get above that becomes your rank. So it's great from that, um, like obviously replayability, trying to better your strategy time and time again. So would I recommend this as a solo experience? Definitely. I absolutely love that it actually play, plays really quickly. So you get to you know try different things over and over again. Uh, you get that Euro hit of that strategy and that, oh, you know, that tension of I only have a limited number of actions. And even when you're playing with all three colors, you're still obviously having to, to map ahead and go, I know that I'm going to be blocking myself there and there. I do feel like with the advanced uh, variant, because you're allowed to use the the five player copy action I very rarely feel like I'm truly completely locked out of something that I want to do because I'll, I'll often be able to kind of use one of those copy actions to get myself out of out of trouble I still find it it's quite a tight game um, and and quite enjoyable would I say um, is this game better with Amy or without Amy I'm actually gonna say that this game is better with Amy because I really do even though in the solo mode I enjoy that campaign mode and that um, aiming to like that striving to improve your own score. I really do enjoy when I'm playing with Amy um, that I don't know where she's going to go. I don't know what she's going to block. So there's there's always there's that element of having to be flexible. So I can't fully control um, all the steps that are going to happen in the game. So would I recommend it? Definitely. Would I recommend it as a solo? Definitely. Do I recommend it as a uh, a game that uh, you play multiplayer? Yes, we absolutely love this. Uh, it's it plays super quick and it's um, incredibly fun. All right, I hope you enjoyed that playthrough and review. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so that you'll be informed whenever any new videos are posted or published. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments. Is, do you find this um, the solo variant, uh, the theme or solo series, something that you'd be interested in? Um, is it helpful to see the difference between the multiplayer and the solo? And uh, yeah, have you played this solo? What are your thoughts and experiences? That's it for me. Bye for now.